Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Uh, today we're continuing talking about limits, sequence limits. That's a preparation for limits for functions, and that is a preparation for derivatives. So basically, it's all gearing towards uh, derivatives. Um, this lecture and uh, the whole course actually is presented on unizor.com. I do recommend you to, to take the whole course and uh, for these lectures go straight to the website because um, any lecture contains on this website very detailed notes and they are very useful actually to, um, to examine before or after the lecture. In addition, uh, registered students can take exams on the website. The website is free, so it's a very useful tool for education. All right, back to limits. Now, before, we didn't really concern ourselves too much about difficulties of identifying what is the limit. Our simple examples were really trivial, like what's the limit of, uh, I don't know, a sequence something like 1 over n. I mean, obviously, it's uh, infinitesimal as n goes to infinity, it goes to zero. Today, I would like to talk about cases which are not obvious. And um, in limit theories, they're usually called indeterminate. So, there are many problems where limits are not so obvious as this one. And uh, they require certain preparation job uh, from you to determine what exactly is the limit. And what's very important and probably the most important when we will talk about derivatives, all the de de derivatives are based on taking the limits where it's not obvious, basically. For instance, in this case we have a constant divided by um, infinitely growing variable, so that's obvious. But if you have one um, let's say infinitesimal divided by another inf infinitesimal, the result I I is not so obvious. Or you subtract one um, infinitely growing variable from another. Again, the answer is supposed to be somehow derived based on certain transformations which you have to do with the sequences in question before it becomes obvious what's the limit actually, what the limit actually is. So, today we will talk about these cases. And let me just repeat that for derivatives, it's exactly these indeterminate cases which, which occur. All right, so, here is what we are going to do right now. Uh, I'll just give you a few examples of the types of indeterminate uh, forms these sequences might actually take. And in each case, I will just explain uh, as an example what can be done about this particular case to resolve the limit. And uh, there is no like general approach how to take limits like for any cases. But we will discover certain commonalities between uh, whatever the examples I have. All right, so let's do it one by one. The first not so simple uh, limit I would like to take is the following. I have a sequence which is a product of infinit infinitesimal and some kind of infinitely growing. So one thing is decreasing as n goes to infinity and another thing is increasing as n goes to infinity. Question is, how can I take this limit? How do I know what actually is the result of uh, the limit of this particular sequence? Well, this is a very, very simple case of indeterminate limit because what actually this is, it's 2n plus 3 divided by n, which is sequence of, let's divide it, 2 plus 3 over n, right? So now we have a constant 
plus infinitesimal. And we know that limit of sum is equal to sum of limits. Now this is the constant, so it lim it, its limit is 2. This uh, has a limit 0, because n is in uh, denominator, so the result will be 2. So this particular sequence converges to 2. And as you see, we needed to do some very, very simple transformation to obtain this. It's not obvious just looking from um, uh, look, looking at the original sequence, what exactly the result is. Now, as from the type of indeterminate limit which we are talking about, you see this is infinitesimal and this is infinitely growing. So there is some kind of a symbolic, um, uh, symbolic um, determination, if you wish, or um, certain label which we can put on the whole class of um, limits of that type. It's zero times infinity. Zero signifies infinitesimal and infinity signifies the uh, infinitely growing. So we are resolving in this particular case this type of indeterminism. Now, can all uh, uh, limits of this type can be resolved so easily? Absolutely not. And sometimes we might actually have um, the situation when there is no limit, but in this case it's simple. So for each particular case I will present an example or two and just to give you a flavor that uh, there is some work which needs to be done to determine what exactly is the limit. Okay. Okay, another example is basically based on this one which we have already just considered. Example of uh, which can be sy symbolically designated this type of uh, uh, symbol. Uh, infinity divided by infinity. What actually it means, I have infinitely growing divided by another let's say infinitely growing sequence we cannot apply um, some theorems that the limit of uh, a ratio is equal to ratio of the limits because in this case both numerator and denominator do not have a concrete limit both are infinitely growing but at the same time we can make certain modifications, uh, transformations of this uh, without basically equivalent transformation, without changing anything. So as you understand, I can uh, represent numerator as 2n plus 2 plus 1 and divide 2n plus 2 by n plus 1 and I will have 2 plus 1 over n plus 1. Right? 2n plus 2 and plus 1, that's plus 3. Now, and this obviously is converging to 2, because it's 2 plus infinitesimal. So, that's just another infinity over infinity. Again, it's just a symbol. It doesn't really mean the division or anything like that. Just a symbolical designation. So, the first one was 0 times infinity. This one, infinity divided by infinity. Okay. I think this is these symbols, like infinity over infinity, uh, again, it's, it's only symbols. Do not take them as, as a real operation. Okay, what's next? Next is the following. I have sine n divided by n squared. Now, same thing. We cannot apply limit of the ratio is equal to ratio of limit because the top doesn't have a limit at all because it's just a sign it goes from plus one to minus one 
so it doesn't have any limits. The bottom is infinitely growing. However, however, we can resolve this limit. How can we do it? Well, if you remember, uh, and if you don't, you can always refer to, there was one of the previous lectures where I have actually proven that if you have certain sequence and you know that this sequence that each element of this sequence is between other sequences and you know that both boundaries are going to the same limit then this one also goes to the same limit so we are basically squeezing this sequence from left and from right and as n goes to infinity if these two converge to one in the same number this must actually uh, also converge to this number now so we can al also use it here it's one over n square and minus 1 over n square, right? Because the sign is always between minus 1 and 1. Now, this one is infinitesimal and this one is infinitesimal because it's a constant divided by n square and n square goes to um, infinity, right? So, both of them are converging to 0 and that's why this one also converges to 0. So we have the situation here when we have a no uh, non-convergent uh, in the numerator and infinitely growing um, in the denominator. So that's another case which I wanted to. Okay. Few more examples. Okay, <coughs> I have here an example 0 over 0. It means one infinitesimal in the numerator and another infinitesimal in denominator. And I would like actually to tell you that this is probably the most frequently occurring type of indeterminate limits which occurs in derivatives. Because all derivatives are built around this ratio of one infinitesimal over another infinitesimal. So it's a very important case. So let me just make a concrete example. I have 2 to the power of minus n plus 1 plus 3 to the power of minus n divided by 2 to the power of minus n. Okay. On the top I have one infinitesimal, right? This is negative, which means it's 1 over 2 to the power of n to the power of n plus 1. Obviously, as n growing, 1 over 2 uh, goes to 0. Same thing here. This is 1 over 3 to the power of n. 3 to the power of n is infinitely growing. 1 over 3 to the power of n is infinitesimal. So this is infinitesimal plus this is infinitesimal. Sum is infinitesimal. And in the bottom I also have, uh, have in infinitesimal. So, how can I resolve this? Well, in this case it's easy. You just divide this by this. So what do you have? 2. When you divide, you know that you have to subtract the exponential part, right? So it's minus n minus 1. That's this one. And you have to subtract minus n, which means plus n. That's division this over this. Now, division plus this over this, it's 3 over 2 to the power of minus n, right? Now, what is this? Minus n plus n. So it's 2 to the power of minus 1, which is 1 half, plus 3 seconds to the power of minus n. Now, this obviously is infinitesimal, so this thing converges to one half. Okay?
Next. Sine square of 1 over n divided by 1 minus cosine of 1 over n. Okay, how can I determine the limit of this one? Well, in this case, what I would do, well, obviously, as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0, cosine of 1 over n goes to cosine of 0, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so here we have uh, infinitesimal. Same thing here. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0, sine of 0 is 0. So we have one infinitesimal divided another, 0 over 0 type of indeterminate. Now, how can I get rid of this indeterminism? How can I determine? Well, in this particular case and in many other, obviously you notice that if you will multiply it by 1 over by 1 plus cosine of 1n here and here what happens? well this is 1 minus cosine square which is 1 minus cosine square is a, co is a sine square, right? and sine square of 1 and will um, uh, We'll cancel this one and we will have 1 plus cosine 1n. Am I right? So 1 minus cosine square of 1n, which is sine square, it will cancel this one, and that's the only thing which will be remaining. And the result is what does it converge to? n goes to infinity, 1nth goes to 0, so cosine of 1nth goes to cosine of 0, which is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So the limit of this is 2. Now, this is a little trick, if you wish, and I don't think I can, you know, teach you all the tricks, but the more problems like this you will solve, obviously, the more tricks you will have in your repertoire. But this is just kind of a thing which, which, which is obvious if you look at this, 1 minus cosine, and then it's kind of obvious you have to multiply by 1 plus cosine to get 1 minus cosine square, and it will be cancelled with sine square. Okay. Well, I'm saying it's obvious because I have already solved it, right? For people who didn't, it's not so obvious, so you have to really think about this, and as a result, the whole thing, actually, the whole course is supposed to just cause people thinking, so it's obvious. Now, next. Next, I have another example of infinitesimal times um, infinitely growing. Okay, 1 over n plus 1, that's my infinitesimal, times n square. That's my infinitely growing. So this is a sequence. How can I find uh, the, the, the limit of this thing? Well, uh, the easiest way, I believe, is to replace it with 1n plus 1, n square minus 1 plus 1. Um, now n minus 1 is, as n square minus 1 is um, n minus 1 times n plus 1, n plus 1, right? So this times this would give you n minus 1, and this plus this would give you plus this. Now this is much easier, because this is infinitely growing, plus infinit infinitesimal. Well, obviously, if you will add infinitesimal to infinite growing, you will get still infinitely growing. So this thing is infinitely growing to infinity. That's basically the result. Now, it's not obvious looking just from this that this is a result. I mean, it's obvious for some people, um, but they already have this mentally made uh, uh, these kind of... Uh, manipulations in mind. 
Um, another more, I would say, um, typical way in this case is represented differently. It's n squared divided by, and I will take n outside of this. So n plus 1 I will represent this. Now I can cancel one of them. Now this is infinitesimal. 1 plus infinitesimal is obviously um, uh, uh, converging to one um, uh, sequence. So there is nothing wrong with this. And plane n is obviously infinitely growing. So you have infinitely growing divided by something which is very close to one, which means it doesn't really change the infinite growth phenomenon. All right, so that's one of them. Another, another is more interesting. Sine 1 over n times n. Now, n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0, sine of 0 is 0, so this is infinitely uh, in infinitesimal, and this one is infinitely growing. So again, we have 0 times infinity indeterminate. Now, here I would like actually to again go back in memory, and um, in one of the lectures where I was using trigonometry and geometry and the limit theory, I actually proved that sine of x divided by x as x angle x goes to zero in radians that this thing is converging to one. So for the proof of this I can refer you to one of the lectures um, in trigonometry. Um, in notes for these lectures I actually specify exactly the name of that lecture. Right now I don't remember exactly but something like trigonometry chapter and then using trigonometry for geometrical uh, problems. So I actually um, have proven this. Now I can use this in this particular case because this is not other but sine 1n divided by 1n, right? Multiplying by n I replace with division by 1 over n. Now there is nothing wrong by the way with using n in denominator because n is never equal to zero, n goes to infinity. So we are absolutely fine making these manipulations, we are not like losing anything. And this is exactly what this is all about, because as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to zero. That's exactly corresponds to this. So the limit of this is 1. It converges to 1. And by the way, the proof of this is quite interesting. I do recommend you to go back um, and uh, examine this particular lecture. In notes for this lecture, I have exact reference to, to this. Okay, next. Next is when I have infinity over infinity. So I have infinitely growing divided by another infinitely growing. So this sequence. Well, this is an example of a sequence which is a ratio of two polynomials. Now my next lecture will be completely dedicated to this type of infinity uh, over infinity uh, limits, polynomial over polynomial. But in this particular case there is a little bit, again, a small trick. You obviously notice that some of these coefficients is equal to zero, which means n is equal to 1 must be the solution of the equation when n squared plus n minus 2 is equal to 0, which means we can divide it by n minus 1 and represent it as n minus 1 times n plus 2. Now, same thing here. You see, 
sum of coefficients is zero, which means if n is equal to zero, the result will be, if n is equal to one, result will be uh, zero. So it's also supposed to be um, uh, factored out n, n minus one. And here I will have two n, uh, what, plus five? Plus five. And obviously you can cancel n minus one. Again, n is uh, growing to infinity number, so there is no problem of this thing is equal to zero. And this one is a little bit easier because it's linear rather than quadratic. And you can always say that this is n plus two divided by two n plus five seconds, right? Now this can be five seconds minus one second, right? And now we can put parentheses here, which means this divided by this is one half, and this divided by this will be one minus two n plus five seconds. Now this is infinitely small, right? So it's infinitesimal. And this is a constant one half, so the whole thing would be going to one half. It converges to one half, which most of the people with a little experience would guess just looking at the top coefficients at n square. See, one half. But we will talk about this in the next lecture, which is dedicated to ratio of polynomials. Anything else? Okay, here is another one. n square sine 1 over n plus 1 over n. Well, that's kind of easy because I can just divide it. So I will have n squared divided by n. I will have n sine 1 over n plus 1 over n, right? Now this we have, we have already established uh, converges to 1, that's my pr previous problem, and this is infinitesimal, so it goes to 0, the result will be 1. So this thing is converging to 1. And the last type of um, indeterminate forms of limits is infinity minus infinity. And as an example I have this square root n square plus n minus n minus n. That's it. Now, whenever you have something like this, infinity minus infinity, how can you get rid of this indeterminism? Well, in this particular case, I think it's very conveniently to multiply it by this plus this. So again, we were just using it in the previous problem. a b times a plus b is equal to a square minus b square. And why do I have to do it? Because square of this minus square of this, you see n square here and n square here, it will um, cancel out. So the whole thing is equal to, so I multiply it by their sum and divide by sum. Now this is square of this minus square of this, which is plain n. This is square root of n square plus n plus n. Now, did it make our life easier? Yes, actually much easier. Because what we can do is we can divide by n. 
numerator and denominator I will have one here I will have this one I will have plus one and my square root would be if I divide it by n it means that I can divide square root by n square right so it would be n square plus n divided by n square and what is this well obviously this is n square over n square it's 1 plus n over n square is 1 n and this is now easy because only we have here is one infinitesimal and as n goes to infinity obviously this is a constant this is a constant this is a constant and there is only one infinitesimal here so I will have basically this thing goes to square root of 1 which is 1 plus 1 that's 2 so it's 1 half and another the last example on the same type of infinity minus infinity the following n plus 1 minus logarithm by base 2 2 to the power of n minus 1 okay how can we transform this now this is inf infinitely growing and this is infinitely growing that's why it's infinity minus infinity type of the limit so somehow we have to make it better well how can we make it better well here is one of the examples I can um, have n n is equal to logarithm 2 to the power of n by the power of 2 right that's the definition of the logarithm so instead of n I will put so 1 is still here now log 2 2 to the power of n minus log 2 2 to the power of n minus 1 now difference between logarithms uh, with the same base as you remember is logarithm of their ratio now here it's much easier because this is minus 1 plus 1 and I divide this by this and I will have 1 plus log 2 of 1 plus 1 over 2 to the power of n minus 1 and now this is easy because as n goes to infinity this is infinitesimal so 1 plus infinitesimal so that's very much close to 1 it's converging to 1 logarithm of 1 is 0 so 1 plus so the whole thing converges to 1 again a little transformation is needed to get rid of this indeterminism and basically this is the whole story about indeterminate I cannot give you the recipe how to get rid of things like this or 0 times infinity or 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by 0 in every case you have to really think about it so it's a little bit of an art if you wish but again as I was saying before the whole course is supposed to bring you closer to thinking about how to solve the problem um, it's not interesting just to use the, the ready, to, um, ready to use recipe which somebody else has discovered that's just you know training your memory which is important but it's not the purpose the purpose of this is for you to discover for yourself all these little tricks little transformations because the more transformations you will do right now based on your own feelings about how you feel your way um, in, in this forest of problems 
the easier for you would be in the real life to, to solve the problems which any profession will, will present to you. Well, that's it with this very nice <laughs> conclusion. Uh, I will end this lecture. Thank you very much and good luck.